got you interested in filmmaking? Well, uh, many things got me interested in filmmaking. Um, for one, in high school, um, I was an actress. I still acted after high school, but that's where it all started. Um, I took um, theater um, and started acting in different UIL one-act plays starting in junior high. But as I got to high school, I started getting more lead roles. And my mother was the director at the time. And I had always imagined myself directing something as I got older, just the way my mother did. Um, so, ironically, I did not study theater or film when I went when I studied at the University of San Antonio. What I did was um, I started studying painting and art history and video. I took a video class and it was um, a video class in the art department. Uh, UTSA didn't have a film program. So um, in this class, we had a teacher. Our professor was Leslie Raymond, um, which she is now the executive, executive director at the Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor Film Festival. But she showed us a series or in a collection of works of video art by artists like Vito Acconci, Richard Serra, Bill Viola, and my favorite, Pipilotti Riss. And it was when I saw I'm Not a Girl Who Misses Much by Pipilotti Riss, I had decided at that time I had wanted to be a video artist who studied and practiced an extended version of the immediate gratification that video art would give you. So it would be more like hybrid film between experimental video art and experimental film which the two were completely different both video art and experimental film but I wanted to somehow hybridize them and do something that tested the attention span a little more but um performance art and sculpture and um and um yeah that's pretty much what um got me interested in filmmaking. How did you meet Fabrizio Federico? Well, um, I first heard about Fabrizio Federico um, on a Harmony on Harmony Corinne's Wikipedia page under his influences and I don't know, there was just this kind of ring to his name that just stuck in my brain and later I looked him up and I saw the trailer to Black Biscuit and I was just like blown away. So I decided to contact him on Facebook to send him one of my films um, because I was excited after reading the Pink Gate Manifesto. And I sent him one of my films saying, hey, I think this goes by your manifesto. But I think it was um, a short film. Um, but um, after I showed him the film, he op he wanted to do an interview with me on his blog, for his blog. So we just hit it off right away. And um, later down the lines, um, our philosophies just kind of were very similar, and our ideologies about filmmaking and kind of like the language our film spoke were really complemented each other and we thought wouldn't it be a great idea to give other filmmakers that took the same risks as we did um, a place to showcase their guerrilla films um, at the time I don't think that there were very many guerrilla film festivals going on so I asked him hey why don't we start a guerrilla film festival and he thought it was a great idea so um, we started the Gorilla Film Festival, the Straight Jacket Gorilla Film Festival. What is anti-art film? I believe anti-art film um, dates back to some of the discoveries made during the Neo-Dada period. For example, the Fluxus movement, which was enforced by the Fluxus Manifesto. 
a manifesto that stood for a purge of Europeanism, a purge and discharge of um, intellectual art, mathematical art, commercialized art, and bourgeois art. Um, instead promoting non-reality art, illusionistic art, and anti-art that united all people, not just professionals and aristocrats. Um, the anti-film aesthetic is groomed by the evolution of junk film and the anti-beauty in film aesthetics. When I think of anti-art film, I think of the YouTube era where the anti-art film has become an internet phenomenon. Um, the anti-art film movement is coming to unite punk filmmakers and as part of the DIY street culture that these films are revolting. The uh, uh, revolting as anarchists. Um, re encouraging guerrilla film by taking risks and exploring what it's like to make an experimental film or film with no budget. Um, no. Um, um, no really real film equipment and maybe just one person helping you. Um, but here mistakes are beautiful and artists don't have to be responsible and perfection is undefined. What motivates you to finish your films? Well, I wouldn't say I really ever finish my films I just decide when to stop working on them and that kind of determines the end of it I think filmmaking is something I do for myself not for others or to prove perfection or to impress the common audience um, some people either get what I'm doing or they don't and those who don't understand are kind of lost as to where I'm coming from and those who do understand um, kind of feel a similar need to create their own kind of story because in most cases film like this um, films like like this aren't um, catering towards the narrative or towards a plot or any kind of um, form other than what's captured on and off the camera in no particular order or with with or without any purpose at all but um i think um i know when if when a film is finished when i don't have credits mm -hmm. <laughs> what risks were you willing to take while directing your guerrilla films? Well, the kind of mentality that I had when I was starting to learn what it meant to direct a guerrilla film, um, I realized I would take any risk possible to accomplish whatever it was that I wanted to capture on on video or film and um, I went through pretty serious extremes extremities to capture um, really crazy kind of um, scenes that were breaking the law and um, revolting against social order and um, it was kind of like this gorilla this um this gorilla cultural jam where I had declared a nude performance in the middle of Walmart 
aisles um, with this model that I worked with quite often and we agreed that she would pose nude within different aisles of Walmart and it would be like a gorilla performance um, and we captured it on on we captured it and um you know at that point all of us were risking our freedom um risking to go to jail and stuff like that so it um those are some of the risks that i took um that was actually an acid film and fake mockumentary film hybrid that called, titled Scoonies, which you can find on Vimeo. S-C-O-N-N-I-S-S-E. No, forget it. <laughs> I don't know how to spell it. Um, it's it's on my blog, Acid Junk Film Diary. dot blogspot. dot com. But um, the other film that we um, kind of took some risk filming was um or that i took a risk filming myself was um this um public nude performance where um um an actor was serenading a female scarecrow in the nude playing drums in my front yard right down the street from an elementary school and he had actually stepped into the street covered in pink paint um um, wearing saran wrap, which you could see through, and it, he was practically nude, um, getting into his car and driving away with this piñata dragging from his car attached by Christmas lights. What are some of your favorite films? Um, some of my favorite films, well, of course, I love Fabrizio Federico's films. Uh, I also appreciate uh, Jason Marsh. Um, his films are pretty transgress transgressive, which I really enjoy. Um, but some of the most memorable and inspiring films that I've seen um, are is like Trash Humpers by Harmony Korine. Uh, the Holy Mountain by Alejandro Jodorowsky, Pink Flamingos by John Waters, Exit Through the Gift Shop by Banksy, uh, The Cream Master Cycle by Matthew Barney, Pepperminta by Pipilotti Riss, um, any of Marina Abramovic's films, um, Dancer in the Dark by Lazar and Trier, uh, The Perfect Human by Jargon Leith, um, Dario Gento films are really cool. Naked States by Spencer Tunick. Where can people find your films? Uh, people can find my films on my blog. Um, acid junk film diary dot blogspot dot com. Thanks.